Back in around 1994, uh, the company had been around for a while developing a lot of products for other companies and we'd been developing a lot of expertise in digital signal processing. And um, these products that we'd developed for other companies had been very, very successful. And at the same time, the power of digital signal processors was continuing to improve. Digital signal processors, just like computers, they get the advantage of, of all the technology advances, just like our computers get better and better every year, so was DSP. And it occurred to us that there might now be enough DSP power where you could actually create models of how a vacuum tube distorts. So it started out really quite simply as a research project because it really hadn't been done before. We didn't know what might be possible. And uh, you know, one thing led to another until we were very, very pleased with the results that we were getting and decided that uh, this was something we should, we should share with the world and Line 6 was born. When we first started this, I was having a bit of a hard time with HD because it seemed like that was just a, a standard buzzword, but it, it really does come across as, oh, it's just better. But this is really better, like the kind of thing of you will throw out anything you've ever played before better. To a lot of people, we had the sonic sense, right? And, you know, original pods and, and stuff like that. Everyone's like, in the studio, this sounds great, right? But when it got on the stage and they tried to play it on their hand, like it just doesn't feel the same as what we're used to, right? And and so it's that tactile sense that we were trying to get back, and that's that's really the crux of, of what we were going for. Uh, it's it's a lot more more tactile and a lot more fun to play now. As processing power continued to to become more available, we were able to get you know further and further into the details of what really uh, enables a, a great tone to occur. Much like with video, where and with each with each new Pixar film, they're talking about you know how many millions of hair strands they now can can have gently blowing on some fuzzy creature in a in a picture. You know the technology now enables us to to go to incredible detail um, with the the models of of the amplifiers and effects that we study. The feel and dynamics, um, I think, are amazing out of this stuff. You you very quickly fall for the illusion that you have an amplifier mic'd up in another room. It's no longer, well, I'm playing a modeler, I guess I just have to live with this. It's the, no, where's, where's the other cable? I, I know there's another amp in here somewhere. With HD modeling, one of the key things to capture is to go beyond just the sound. With our, with our last generation of modeling, um, in, in a number of blind listening tests and so on, we really achieved a level of, of uh, detail in our models that the recorded sound really couldn't be distinguished from the original. Um, but now, really what you want to capture is every nuance that the guitarist feels while they're actually performing with these models, how the instrument interacts, how their own playing style is really a direct extension to the gear that they're using and how that relationship is built with the performer. Yeah, because what it is under your fingertips is, is very different. You'll, you'll really feel that you're actually playing something. So yeah, there's a lot of changes in HD. To me, it's a whole new world. It's really, it's really great to, to be a part of that. That's really the ultimate test, is being able to take the modeling to that level where, frankly, the, the sound and feel just transcends technology. It's now really about capturing the essence of music making and everything that the, that interaction between the musician and the gear can bring. And I think that's what we've achieved now with HD modeling.